Hello and welcome to another Beer Clubber video. In this video, I'm going to be making this, which is the stone outbuilding with thatch from Renedra. I working titled this video while I was shooting it a speed build, thinking that I was going to be doing lots of speeded up sections, but this really has been so quick, it's used about two paints and very, very little else, very little time, that I haven't had to do any speeding up at all really, maybe a couple of bits here and there. So there, really good fun. Have you built the Renedra building before? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your experiences. This will be being used on a Battle Games of Middle Earth terrain build that I'm working on now. Just thought I'd separate it out as a little bit of a short video and to keep it out of that humongous Battle Games video, which is uh, gonna be probably hours long at this stage. I will stop rambling. I will see you at the end. I really hope that you enjoy this build. So the Renedra stone thatched outbuilding. As you can see, it comes in a little kind of like zip bag with some cardboard over the top, which I'm struggling to remove. Uh, so let's have a look and see what you get in the sprues. So nice artwork. And on the back of that, you have the, um, the instructions, which are quite simple. So yeah, you can see that there are two sprues and uh, on one of them you have the roof and on the other one you have the walls so that's pretty clear so what i'm going to do is uh, have a quick look at the instructions there just to see what to do it looks quite obvious i don't think it's going to take too much effort so what i'm going to do is grab my clippers and i'm going to take the walls out of the sprue so I'll be doing this very carefully um, and uh, then I will clean them up. So I will skip ahead a bit and uh, speak to you again when there's something more to say. Now I'm going to just tidy up the little bits of where I've cut them off the sprue, which have been left behind by the side cutters. I'm using my, um, it's actually a Citadel knife here with a sharp blade on it. Just very, very carefully coming along and trimming off the bits of sprue that have been left behind. So I'll go along and I'll do this on everything. And then I'll be back when there's something else to add. tidied everything up now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of my Tamiya Extra Thin to glue these together. It is a plastic kit so that should be good. So what I'll be doing is I'll be attempting, and I don't do this very well actually, <laughs> I'll be attempting to do, use this in the way that you're supposed to which is press the two parts together and allow capillary action to pull the glue into the joint as you hold it together tightly. However as you can see I'm struggling quite a lot. So I will put some music on and you can watch as I faff and fiddle. I do get it done and it does work in the end, but yeah, it was not as simple as it possibly should have been. see that I have managed to get that to dry it didn't actually take very long to go off so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer up the sections of the roof so that they're in the correct angle and then I will use again some more of the Tamiya extra thin and attempt to glue it together by running it down and letting the capillary action work now this didn't work as you'll see shortly so um, yeah let's uh, let's skip to the next section A little bit of time I worked out that that really wasn't going to work so I've come here with some super glue gel and I'm running a bead along the apex and then a thin bead at each edge where the ridge piece will go and this ended up holding it quite securely so maybe that might be a good tip for you to take away from this build next up 
we're down in the spraying area um, and I've actually picked up the wrong paint here I've used this before and it's going to cause me a lot of trouble and I'm already a little bit frustrated at myself but first of all you can see what happens when you don't shake the can well enough it comes out and it's way too thick so um, that was the first mistake I made uh, and the second mistake I made was actually buying this can in the first place this is a this is a very very shiny paint and it's going to be a real pain in the backside for me to continue with. but I'm going to carry on uh, you see the good the bad and the ugly on this channel this is really really bad and really really ugly so what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, just take off the worst of that overspray um, and then I don't know why I did it but I sprayed more on it which also was probably a bad idea anyway you can see that it's actually coming out evenly now but anyway next up with that done so I've um, spray painted that I was doing that in beige I'm going to prime the stonework with my grey primer which I know is not shiny and actually does work well so we'll just get in there and spray paint that I'm not trying to do it too much because I don't mind there being a little bit of shading um, and uh, that's going to be a good a good starter so um, that's the first stage of the painting. Now we come to the next step of painting and as you can see I've got some Windsor & Newton burn tumper. Uh, what I'm going to do is attempt to first of all squeeze it out onto my plate but I normally use this not via that method, I normally take the lid off. And so in a second I realize that's just too clogged, take the lid off and I'll make use of it that way. And my plan here is to make a wash, which I'm going to put over the top of the thatched part of the build. Now I didn't need that much paint, <laughs> but anyway. So I've got my pot of water and I'm going to water that down quite substantially using my brush and turn it into quite a thin wash. And then when that's done, I will be putting that all over the thatched area of the roof, um, as I say, and I'm going to precursor here a little bit. This worked really, really well and saved my backside really because of the badly chosen primer. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here is applying a heavy wash of burnt umber from Windsor and Newton over the whole of the roof. <music> Next up, I'm going to make use of the same paint and I'm going to do an even um, more, even thinner wash, <laughs> try and find the words, and wash it over all of the brickwork. This is to really, really put some grime on this building. It's not supposed to be new uh, and to hopefully get the deeper into the recesses than I was there. So a very, very uh, light um, wash with the Windsor & Newton over the outside. <music> got so much left that what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the inside with pretty much neat of the uh, raw umber, burned umber, can't remember which it is, I'll try to remember to put on the uh, screen which one it is, uh, and uh, this is to make it look like it's been maybe clad with mud or something um, to just uh, point the walls and keep the uh, keep some of the um, wind and draft out so yes, I'm just painting the inside with that. It doesn't work very well because I've watered it down a bit much, but it does its job and it looks okay when it's dry. And this is the next day when I see just how amazingly that wash has worked. It really has. I mean, it looks a bit shiny on the camera, but in person it's beautiful. And also, well, yeah, the inside hasn't been done. I'll think about that on another video. Also, this looks really nice. That, that wash has worked very, very well. Like I said, the inside isn't all that great. There's some that washed off, but again, I'll sort that out in another video. That's just another coat of the same paint. So the plan now is to do some dry brushing to pick out some of the details. So first of all, I'm gonna use my light gray and I'm gonna do a relatively heavy dry brush over the whole of the stone on the outside. to use some of this very bright yellow <laughs> uh, almost white yellow 
to dry brush over the top of the thatch. So the idea here is just to kind of bring out the final details and I end up doing quite a heavy dry brush as well on this and it does really, really work. It just makes it, it just makes it pop a little bit more. So yeah, another dry brush with some bright yellow. So there you are, I told you it was quick and easy and not very many processes. I hope that I've, that's been entertaining and uh, educational. And maybe you'll go out and pick this model up yourself and give it a go and let me know in the comments, that would be wonderful. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to click the bell and select all so that YouTube tells you when a world of my videos goes live. And I'll wrap up by saying as I always do, please stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.